Astronomy cannot, I mean, it, it, it cannot just be pure thought because that becomes science fiction. I can think of the most outlandish things that made the universe and how planets are created, whatever, how they interact. But they stay science fiction unless I can design an experiment that generates data to either say yes or no to these models. The, uh, our uh, sources of data, you can have enorm enormous amounts of data that, that, that can be there, but the sources are small and they're incomplete. And so once we deal with the data, we have to worry a lot about the completeness and accuracy of data. And we'll come to that in a moment. But, um, and so for example, I need, so are you familiar with this, this whole story of the elephant and the blind man? Right? So you had the seven blind people and they tried to figure out what an elephant is like and one of them, you know, grasped their tail and said, oh, the elephant is very, very thin. And the other one got the ear and said, oh, elephant is like a fan, things like that. And the universe is like that. And uh, the universe does not show ourselves uh, in any form of data in its entirety. And that's because our form of data is light. Okay, so light because light exists in all kinds of forms. It's electromagnetic radiation. And our eyes are sensitive to a very small fraction of that entire spectrum. It's only wavelengths going from 400 to you know, 900 nanometers or something like that. And we call that light. And for thousands of years, that has been the only source of information. And that's because most of the other forms of light are actually stopped by our atmosphere, unless we you know, earlier in the 20th century, we discovered radio waves. So radio, radio astronomy started. That's actually that the atmosphere lets it through. Atmosphere lets the light through. But anything in between, infrared, ultraviolet, gamma rays, X-rays, everything is stopped by the atmosphere. So it had to wait for us to go to space to actually see all that. Now, it's like then the we work every kind of. Um, instrument we build works in a different part of the spectrum and so telescope and instrument combination so I build a telescope and I put a camera like this on top of it I can see only light here right this only this won't detect x-rays or ultraviolet or whatever so I take a telescope I need a telescope to intensify because right now a lens like that is only getting light from me reflected from there this is not going to take a picture of a star or a galaxy to do that, I need to take a light gathering bucket that is so huge and focus all that light into that lens. And that comes from, um, you know, that's, a that's for a telescope. A telescope is just a bucket, right? Now, um, so big telescope, a telescope and, and that combination. The second important thing that that's doing, that camera is doing, is that it's extending our eye's limitation. Our eye can only keep information for one tenth of a second and then it's gone. But then that means that I can't, I can only see very bright things. If I want to see very faint things, I have to integrate that. And as you know, for a normal camera too, you can increase the exposure. And uh, in um, other, other in any, every form of professional astronomy, we do that. I mean, I, I've often taken an exposure that, uh, that's a whole night long, 10 hours. I've often taken an exposure in radio astronomy, which is 24 hour long. Because in radio astronomy, you can work in the day as well. So you just let it go and, and, and collect as much as possible, right? So that's... But even then, you see the tail of the elephant. You don't see the ears, you don't see the body. And if you want to make everything come together and understand an object, you need all of these things. And now another whole thing has opened up and that's gravitational waves, as you know. That's a different thing altogether. So you have to put all that together. And the data comes... So you can see the same thing an image, say you take the image of the sun and you take it in in normal light and it's boring, it's just a yellow disk. You see the same picture in ultraviolet light and it is not a disk. There's a huge stuff going on. 
right? And so that tells us about the magnetic fields, that tells about the sunstorms, that everything. So you have to put the two together to understand the sun. Not the two, but then you need a radio image, you need a etc. 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 So all that is happening now because only now we have the instruments, we can go to space. So that is why astrophysics is a very, very new subject. And the amount of data has gone up immensely. 